Any comments from Coach Bogle? Okay. Action. Yeah, coming off a you know a home win for us it was a lot of fun to play at you know for me to you know be in the stadium for the first time as a coach. So a lot of fun. Um, obviously, there are things we need to correct, but the truth is you have to correct things from the North Carolina win too. And you know, no matter what happens each week, you got to find things to correct. You know, and and I think it was one of those games in which we just got to find a way to cut down on some of the critical and mental errors, and that starts with me too. It is, I'm not just talking, I'm talking to all of us. So, you know, th those are things we all have to look in the mirror on and, and figure out what can we do better. But at the end of the day, our guys have, have done some of the, you know, some of their best stuff late, you know, and no matter how rough it was early or at times it felt sporadic, it, we've shown a tendency to be late in games still with a lot, you know, a lot in the tank and finishing on drives and, and I think went on our longest drive late. So I give Weaver a lot of credit too. They came in here and I thought played really good football and I have a lot of respect for that program. And, and uh, you know, Coach Hill and everything they do. So um, we knew it would be a challenge. Huh? But now, you know, we found a way to win. But more importantly, we got to find a way to build from week two to week three. That's the bottom line. And, and I thought this was a good start with today's practice. Just give me an example of one thing that you really thought you had to clean up. With, with your... You know, some of our, just our overall assignment, whether it be alignment, assignment, some of those things took a step back from where they were week one. Sometimes you can't put a, you know, I can't always put a finger on it, but ultimately it still starts with me. So that's how I look at it is, you know, whatever I need to do a better job of during the week or within the plan. But, you know, but then they have to take that ownership upon themselves as well. We all do. So there were just a few things assignment-wise. You, you might not even see them up there, but there might have been, you know, a misassignment in a block or a misassignment in a route run or a read by a QB or a protection by a running back, you know, and, and those don't even get noticed. But, you know, when, when you have, you start adding too many of those, you know, on top of each other, it's hard. It's hard to execute drives and it's hard to get into any sort of tempo or rhythm. So those are things we're, we're going to work to improve on this week. Ray Davison said that it was no surprise to him what Laird did. I mean, he says, I, I always want to go against him. Uh, what, what did you see in him that prompted you to, to say, hey, we should put this guy on scholarship? Oh, I, shoot, I've, I've seen it all the way back to within the first month I was here. I just saw his before we ever got into football stuff. You're just watching him go through, you know, just drills or obstacle course or things like that. And those, you know, you already know. So you can tell. You can tell those guys that just compete at every little thing. It's 6 in the morning out here. They're doing some sort of, you know, obstacle course or different things like that conditioning. You're going, this guy's got something. You know, and a lot of guys out here have something, but you just, you know, he was my position specific and I was evaluating those guys. I was going, hey, this guy's got something. So, you know, it, it, it wasn't too hard to see and it hasn't changed. That's the thing about Pat Laird. That guy is consistent. He's consistent with how he approaches his day, his week, his month, whatever that might be. And it's not by accident good things happen to him. Why do you suppose that he was so lightly, lightly regarded, lightly recruited coming out of high school? I mean, I he didn't even, would, even have an FCS offer coming out. Know, why was Cooper <laughs> Cup? Why was there, you know, I mean, you know, things happen, you know, in recruiting, and it's not always a science, you know, because I, I always got that, I brought his name up because I always got that question asked for years, you know, and it's just, it's just the natural thing is that recruiting's hard, <laughs> you know, so I, I don't, I don't, you know, it's one of those things that's hard, and sometimes you might just misevaluate something or something. You know, just just gets you know, guys are late bloomers. I mean, there's just so many factors that go into it. So, but at the end of the day, you know, guys like guys like Pat find a home, and then because they keep working, they find a way on the field. You know, wherever that might be. And I don't think, no matter how the path got him to this point, he's in the right spot. He's where he's supposed to be, and and uh, doing a great job. How rewarding is that for you as a coach to see a guy who's worked this way and, and fought his way to get some time to have those kind of successes on a Saturday yeah I love it I mean you just love seeing you know guys like that you know I love seeing any guy who out here because every one of these student athletes people don't sometimes understand the time the effort I mean everything that goes into their their weeks their months their calendar year but but yeah when you see a guy who, yeah came in as a walk-on you know it's that much tougher you know so um, it is it's it's rewarding it's rewarding to see any of these guys and definitely in Pat's situation a guy who just puts so much into it with you know, I don't know how many snaps he's had in years past exactly, but probably nowhere near the amount of obviously work he's put in. No one, no one does. So to see that then come into play and, and him having success, it's, it's fun to see that. That's why you do it. At least after Saturday's game, immediately 
Ross and some of the other offensive players weren't real pleased with how they played. Um, we're hungry to get back in here. Did you sense that this week yeah. that, that they were ready to get after? That's how I felt when I went home. <laughs> I felt like I got my face beat in. You know, I didn't do a good job. I mean, that's how I look at it. You know. Now, granted, half the country loses every weekend. Let's not forget that. You know. So, I mean, that's something we all lose track of sometimes. So you never want to minimize what it takes to win a college football game. Weber State was a very strong team and came in here and played well. But regardless of who the opponent was, it was it was some of our mental errors, critical errors that we were most upset about. That was that was the biggest thing that, that you know frustrated myself and some of those guys. But you want that to burn, but you also don't want them to also be able to take a breath too and go, you know what, we found a way to win. But with that being said, we got to attack all the little things, you know, and, and attack the process, not base our ups or downs totally on the end result of the game, good or bad. We got to base them on getting better each week. What stuck out to you the most about uh, about Mississippi's defense? Oh, a few things. I mean, they're just they're they're physical. They're really physical and you know big with their D tackles. They do a really great job and they set the tone. But then they have great athletes, great size, great strength outside of that. I mean, they're not the tallest on the back end, but they're strong and they're stout within their secondary. Um, so they they all can tackle. They all can run. You know, so it's just a it, it's a tough challenge. It's a really tough challenge for us, but I love that challenge. Does number thirty eight stick out uh, on yeah, film? He does some really good things. What does he do? He does. I mean, he just you know he's he's active. That's the best way I can say it. He's active. He can do a lot of things. He can he can do things. You know, when he's rushing the passer, he can do things. If they drop him into coverage, I mean, he just he stands out as an uh, active is the best you know way to describe. When you describe a defensive player as active, that's usually a a big compliment to what he does. The offense, so, you know, on Saturday you had three ball start calls on, on your linemen and you had two sacks. A L- little bit of a step back from, from Carolina? A, a little bit. I mean, there was a, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was a little bit. We just got to focus in on our cadence and not, you know, move calls by the defense. That's basically what it comes down to. So, it was just one of those things. When in the season do you as a coach start to notice a quarterback and a wide receiver who are particularly on the same page start to notice a special connection? When, I'm sorry. When in the season do you as a coach notice those hands and- Oh, it depends. I mean, it just it's all it's all relative to the situation. It depends how much they've gotten to work together in the past or how much they've gotten to work together in spring. It can happen a little bit quicker, but you know, it, it just you know, I just my deal isn't necessarily when exactly it happens. My my thing with the guys is how are we improving it each week? Whether you know, because wherever it's at, it still has never gotten to the level it can be at. You know, and that's that's how I look at it. Is having the extended quarterback battle sort of extend that timeline of when that tends to happen? Uh, you know, there's there's a little bit of that because maybe they didn't get as many reps if they were named the starter. But honestly, it's one of those things where we're still in a much better. We're in the best spot as a team, I believe, and offensively because they those quarterbacks battled all the way until the start of the season. So I wouldn't I wouldn't change that for anything. You know, they all worked with each other, and we got a lot of reps if you go all the way back to April. What do you want to see from Vic and where are you going forward? I just want to see him continue to grow, continue to uh, find ways to, and he'll be in some situations. He's been in some tough situations where it's been short yardage, short yardage. So sometimes his yards per carry isn't a fair assessment exactly. Um, but I want to see him get to a level where it's not even about some big run. I, that doesn't, I'm not worried about that for many of the guys. Let those happen naturally. You know, it's just that we're going to get to a level where we're get, seeing the six, the seven, the eight, the nine yard runs, and and uh, and and I really foresee that coming. Did you see some of your other running back today? Uh, did they get some reps too? Yeah, we we had uh, yeah we had four guys get some reps, and uh, you know they they all did a great job. I got to watch film, but did some great things. Did Zion? Uh, Coach Coach Wilcox mentioned Zion. No, he's not. He's not quite yet. So, but he he will be. He'll be back in the mix soon. So, and where he Laird, uh, DC, and 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 who? And Hale. Who's, and Hale. Yep. So you moved him over from from the fullback group. Yeah, we've been. He's kind of been a hybrid, being able to do a little bit of both. Because he came in as a running back anyway. Yeah. And it's yeah. He was all spring too. Okay. So he's had reps within our offense at tailback. Uh, DC didn't have a whole lot of time uh, in the fall yet, but uh, what have you seen out of him? Oh, he's, he's just, he runs with a passion. That's what I love about DC. DC runs, you know, like his hair's on fire. I mean, he just is flying downhill. He's, you know, he's got tons of stuff to work on, like we all do, and like, you know, in terms of that. But one thing you can't take away from him, he runs without fear and he runs downhill and uh, does a great job with it. So it's exciting to see him. Just, I just enjoy coaching guys who, who have that type of fire and that type of passion. You know, and he has that. He has that in practice too. That's not just a wait for a scrimmage deal or this or that. I mean, he's doing it. You saw him out here on Tuesday practice. He's doing it. So, love to see him. Thank you.